Today we're going to look at conservation of energy. Okay, we can always account for the amount of energy an object has. Okay, energy is always conserved through a situation. Okay, if an object starts with gravitational potential energy and then that converts to kinetic energy, we can always calculate that change. We know that all of the gravitational goes to kinetic. And if it loses some along the way, we can also account for that mathematically. So all of the problems we do today are going to focus on looking at how does energy change throughout a situation. Okay, before we get to that though, I want to review a little bit what our symbols are in our energy equations and what units we use for everything. So first off, we have kinetic energy. Right, kinetic energy is symbolized with Ke, and we measure our energy in joules, okay, which we abbreviate with a J. Okay. Next up we have mass, which as always is lowercase m, and we measure in kilograms. Okay, our velocity as usual is lowercase v, which is measured in meters per second. In gravitational potential energy, we also abbreviate with GPE, and it is also measured in joules. Gravity is going to be a lowercase g, and the unit for gravity is the same as acceleration, which is meters per second squared. Our height is going to be a lowercase h, and the unit for that is meters. Okay. So, when we look at the problems we're going to solve, right, we're going to use our two energy equations that we've already talked about. Right, we have our kinetic energy equals one half mass times velocity squared, and our gravitational potential energy equals mass times gravity times height. So, if we look at number one, a seven kilogram bowling ball is thrown up with a speed of 15 meters per second we're going to find the maximum height. Now before we start trying to figure out how we can find the maximum height, okay, we want to figure out what type of energy do we start with and what type of energy do we end with. So if we look at the problem, it says we throw this bowling ball up with a particular speed. So if our bowling ball is moving, that means it's going to start with kinetic energy. Okay, so we start with kinetic energy. Now if we think about what happens to an object when we throw it up in the air, okay, we know it goes up into the air, and then it hits a certain maximum height, and at that maximum height, its velocity is going to be zero. Okay, if we think back to projectiles, we know that the velocity of a projectile at the top of its path, or at its maximum height, is going to be zero. So that means once this bowling ball hits its maximum height, it has no more kinetic energy and all of its energy has become gravitational potential energy. Okay, so we know that the kinetic energy becomes entirely gravitational potential energy. So I can set those two things equal to each other. So I can say that however much kinetic energy I start with equals the amount of GPE I will end with. The next thing I want to do is plug in my equations. Okay, I'm not trying to solve for Ke or GPE, so I'm going to plug in both my equations. On this side, I'm going to have one half mv squared equals, and then on this side, I will have mgh. And now I can find my maximum height by solving this equation for h. So over here, when I plug in my numbers, I'm going to have one half times seven kilograms times my velocity of 15 meters per second that number is going to get squared. That equals 7 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times h. When I solve this, the first thing I like to do is simplify the left-hand side of my equation and simplify the right-hand side of my equation. So if I type in my calculator 1 half times 7 times 15 squared, I'm going to get 787.5 
And that's going to equal 7 times 9.8 times h, which would give me 68.6 h. Okay. Now if I want to get h by itself, I need to divide by 68.6. And so I'm going to say that h equals 11.48 meters. Okay. Our next problem. A 900 kilogram car has a speed of 11 meters per second. It gains 33,500 joules of kinetic energy. What is its final kinetic energy? Okay, so if our car starts. Our car starts with an initial speed, so that means it's going to have kinetic energy to start. And we want to know what's its final kinetic energy. What does it end with? All right, so our kinetic energy, and we start with kinetic energy, and we also end with kinetic energy. So I'm going to make these different by labeling my initial Ke with an I and my final Ke with an F. Okay. Now, these are going to each be on one side of my equation, but what I need to figure out is where does this 33,500 joules come in? Okay. So we know that we start with this initial kinetic energy, and then we gain this 33,500 joules. Okay. These two things combined together make our final kinetic energy. So if I need to combine these two things, to get my final answer, I'm going to add 33,500 joules on this side, and those two things added together will give me my final kinetic energy. Okay, so now that I have my equation set up, I can start plugging in my equations for kinetic energy. However, if you notice, we want to find what the final kinetic energy is, so I'm not going to plug in an equation on this side. Right, I'm just going to come over here and say that one half my mass times my velocity squared plus 33,500 joules equals my final kinetic energy. Okay, and now I can start plugging numbers into my equation. So one half times my car's mass is 900 kilograms times its velocity of 11 meters per second, that number gets squared, plus 33,500 joules equals my final kinetic energy. Okay. And this time I, can, I don't have any variables I need to solve for on this side of my equation, so I can just plug everything in and go. So once I plug that into my calculator, I'm going to get a final answer of 87,950 joules. Okay. Next problem. A 600 kilogram roller coaster has a height of 20 meters. How much kinetic energy does it gain when it rolls to a height of 11 meters? So, we have a roller coaster that is at a specific height. Right? We know what height it's at, we don't know how fast it's going. So all we know that it starts with is a certain amount of GPE. Okay? We know it has a certain amount of GPE at this height of 20 meters. Okay? And we want to know how much kinetic energy it gains when it rolls to a new height. So we know that this GPE is going to change into kinetic energy when it rolls to this new height. Okay. So I don't gain or lose any other energy along the way, so I can just leave my equation as GPE equals Ke, and I want to find Ke. So when I plug my equation in now, I'm going to leave Ke as it is and just put my GPE equation in. So I'm going to have mass times gravity times height equals the amount of kinetic energy I gain. Okay, so now I can start plugging my numbers in. All right, my mass 
is 600 kilograms. Gravity is still 9.8 meters per second squared. But now I've gotten to my height. And if you notice, I have two different heights. Okay, I have one height of 20 meters, and I have another height of 11 meters. Okay, so now we gotta figure out what we need to plug in for height. Okay, if we look back at the problem, we want to know how much kinetic energy it gains when it rolls down to a height of 11 meters. So that means it starts up here at 20, and it rolls down to 11. Okay, we have a certain amount of GPE up here at 20, and we lose some of that to kinetic energy down here at 11. So we wanna know how much energy do we lose from here to here. So instead of picking one of these numbers to start, or to use as my height in my equation, I wanna find the difference between the two. Because the amount of kinetic energy I gain is equal to the GPE that I lose over those two heights. So for my height, I'm gonna say that I have 20 meters minus 11 meters. And that is equal to my kinetic energy. Just like before, I don't have any letters I need to try and solve for on this, on this side of my equation, so I can just plug it into my calculator and go. The one thing to be careful of is that if you plug in 20 minus 11 into your calculator, you need to make sure you keep it in parentheses. So you do 600 times 9.8 times, and then start parentheses, 20 minus 11, and then finish your parentheses. Once you get all of that typed into your calculator, you're going to get an answer of 52,920 joules. All right, last problem. An 800 kilogram roller coaster starts with 20 meters per second and it loses 45,000 joules due to friction. How high can it get up a hill? Okay, so we know our roller coaster is starting moving, so that means it's going to start with kinetic energy. Okay, and then we wanna know how high it can get up a hill. So if it's trying to roll up a hill, that means our energy is changing into gravitational potential energy. Okay. Now, if we lose 45,000 joules due to friction, okay, that means whatever energy is getting changed into gravitational potential energy, okay, however much we can change into gravitational potential energy is going to be whatever kinetic energy we start with minus what we lose along the way. Okay, so our 45,000 joules is going to go over on this side of our equation because we need to look at how much energy do we have left to become GPE after we lose it due to friction. Now I can start plugging my equations in. I'm gonna have one half mv squared minus 45,000 joules equals mass times gravity times height. Okay, and I wanna know how high it can get up a hill, so I'm going to be solving for h in this problem. So if I start plugging my numbers in, one half times my mass of 800 kilograms times my velocity of 20 meters per second squared minus 45,000 joules equals my mass again of 800 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times my height h. Okay. The first thing I'm going to do is type this entire left side of my equation into my calculator. Okay, I don't have any variables that I'm trying to solve for on that side of my equation, so I can just type it in as is. When I type this entire left-hand side into my calculator, I'm going to get an answer of 115,000. That's going to be equal to 800 times 9.8 times h. 
800 times 9.8 is going to be 7, 70, no, 7,840H. Okay. So now to get H by itself, I'm going to divide by 7,840, both sides of my equation. And so I'm going to get an answer of H equals 14. 0.67 meters. Make sure you give the rest of the practice problems on the handout a try and let me know if you have any questions.